So today we're doing a challenge concept that I haven't done in a very long time. Some of you old frogs might remember the 2 million pops challenge, wherein the goal is to get one tower to get 2 million pops in chimps mode out of the total 2.04 million that's available. So essentially about 99% of the pops. And today we're going to go for a very spicy tower choice to get 2 million pops on, which one may not think of the first choice when it comes to damage. And that's the pop pad sub. The Energizer, ladies and gentlemen. Sounds pretty crazy on paper, but this has actually been done plenty of times already. Although, of course, I'm not sure how hard it's gonna be, so I'm gonna give it a go myself and see. Energizer has gotten quite a bit of buffs over the years, uh, such as the recent change a couple of updates ago, where they increased the base damage from 3 to 5, and on top of that, they gave it extra ceramic damage too, so now the late game is gonna be a little bit easier dealing with the super ceramics. But yeah, you wanna know what else makes it easier? The existence of Geraldo. So, uh, Geraldo has some items that will increase the power of the sub while not taking away pops from it because it counts towards that tower's pops. Like, for example, Jerry's Fire. As far as I'm aware, the official document that tracks these uh, 2 million pops challenges, uh, they do allow uh, Jerry's Fire because, again, it's all about looking at that, that pop count of that tower. Well, not exactly the pop count of the tower, rather, the total combined pops of every other tower must be no more than about 42.5k or so. This is just to take into account the uh, pops that one might get from extra regal balloons, for example. Anyways, the cross path of the 5 0 2 is of course going to be Airburst because it helps so much with the early game. The only problem, I guess, is lead because uh, now they remove the lead popping that the 4 0 2 grants, or just a reactor in general. So for that, I guess I'm going to out buff it. Now, I did a bit of testing and the placement is pretty specific, but Hopefully, I should be able to get an Alchemist buff in range of the sub. I think what I need is to give a Village buff to the Alk too. Because right now, it won't reach. And in fact, I'm not even sure I can afford an Alchemist, a Village, and an AMD for next round. But let's just see how close we are. No, I think we're actually there. I actually probably should have dropped this a little bit a couple rounds later. Because right now, we just got pops on the Alk that could have been gone with the sub. But here we go. Yep, perfect. I did it correctly, so now uh, we can get the uh, alpha on the sub. Switch it back up first. Uh, so yeah, it would be nice to rush uh, Balloon Tony Reactor next, just so again, we get as little pops as possible on the Alchemist. Right now, it's kind of in a spot where if balloons do get pretty far on the track, well, it's going to start taking away pops. 41 of them, in fact. And it'll be even worse for a class balloon, so maybe it was a bad idea going for this early. Maybe I should have done something like a mortar, because that's what I've seen a uh, few people do before. Like, essentially, these challenges are just super buffing challenges, but with actual stakes to them. Do love myself a fat, juicy steak, but of course, it's not as, like, we're not going to be able to get every buff in the game. We're just limited to the ones we can pretty much afford in chimps mode, reasonably, so that would be Overclock, Jungle Drums, uh, not sure what else, like, maybe Call the Arms, but yeah, we'll see if the money's there anyways. 402 now. Anyways, round 40 is on its way right now, uh, so we gotta unsubmerge it just so we get the air burst to do a bit more damage. In fact, what we could do is, I recall this being a thing, if you submerge and first tap targeting, you can actually get DPS faster on the Moab. So I just did a little bit of that there. I also should figure out when I should make the leap towards affording an Energizer 34.5 so I can stop worrying about that. I feel like, of course, a Jerry Fire would be really helpful in allowing us to save up to Energizer. But, of course, I also want to wait as long as possible, just so I spend less money. Probably will end up needing the Jerry Fire in the 50s, though, because as you see, when there's multiple uh, Moabs, uh, it's going to be a struggle being able to pop all of them down. So yeah, I probably don't need to play too precisely here, so I'll just go for the Jerry Fire this round. 52 has, like, multiple Moabs, and again, getting Jerry Fire does help us, you know, not get balloons in range of the... Uh, Alchemist as much, so it takes away less pops. Right now, 200, 300 is not a whole lot to worry about. Also, Jerry Fire is just me, or is Jerry Fire not as good mold damage as I thought? Yeah, I'm still gonna need to do some submerging targeting shenanigans. Uh, but other than that, we're looking good. Only 10k to go for Energizer, which means probably uh, if I can make it to round 61, 62, then that's when I can afford it. Oh, you know what else would also help is probably a Jar Pickles, because uh, not only does that increase the damage of the Jerry Fire, but of course, the main sub as well, which right now, again, only does one damage, two with the uh, Alchemist buff. For those who don't know, anything that does less than five damage per shot 
will benefit from a uh, Star Pickles because of how the uh, damage additives work. But I guess if I can save myself from not spending $110, then yes, I will. And looks like I can afford the Energizer earlier than expected. Bam, mid round 58 buy. And you see how much better it is now? <laughs> Actually, it's still not that fast. I mean, I guess that shouldn't really be a surprise given that, well, it's still only five damage per tick. So don't get me wrong, it'll still take quite a while. I mean, just look here. If I submerge it, still kind of gets the Optimus buff. And I guess next up on the list is probably a mob blue, just so those mobs have even lesser chance of reaching the Alchemist. Right now, it's still attacking. Luckily, it's only doing, you know, one damage per shot. All right, boys, we got the glue. So what's next on the list? Probably, I guess, an overclock. And then after overclock, I'm probably thinking more damage. Again, if, if I can afford a called arms, like with reasonable money to spare extra after that, then I'll certainly go for that. Because like, seriously, anything to make this process faster, you can see, even just a BFB has taken absolute years to take down. Oh, I guess also don't underestimate the fact that we get uh, global cooldown decreases too, so... 20% less cooldowns means uh, my overclock will have full uptime on the Energizer, at least close to. If you didn't know if you overclock a tier 5 tower, the uptime is only about uh, 75%. So Energizer should put it pretty close to 100. Same thing with the Call to Arms. Uh, now we'll probably have a pretty solid upkeep on that one. So with Overclock, let's take a look here. Okay, it's not actually quite full uptime. In fact, pretty far off. It's like 90% instead. Still not terrible. Better than 75 if my math checks out. So based on our money so far, it's, we're definitely on our way to affording uh, a Call to Arms next. Now, I also got a glue gun here just to get some extra uh, airburst damage on the ZMG. It is a great time to see uh, just how much we're going to be doing to it and how long it's going to take. So if we just slow it down, it's like... <laughs> Yeah, pretty bad. 30, 40 single target DPS without doing the uh, submerge and uh, unsubmerge shenanigans. Uh, now, could you imagine how we deal with a fortified ZMG? Uh, yeah, that's not going to be very fun. Even a normal ZMG there got pretty damn far. But I guess there are some things we can do later on to help out, like uh, Sabo. But yeah, let's just go for the mid first because we need it for DDTs. Can't rely on just an Alchemist. And honestly, since Jerry's Fire lasts 10 rounds, uh, I might as well just go for this now. Because there's no reason not to just get extra damage for a tiny class of 540. And that will definitely help. Again, in popping the rounds fast so that my Alchemist gets a little bit less pop stolen away. Right now, 2300 is, I mean, a pretty solid amount. But that's still very far off from 42. But I want to stay clear because remember that there was a bad on 100. And so with that, I'm going to need to save a lot of pops, extra pops, on maybe a Spike Storm or First Strike. Because, yeah, no way in hell is Energizer going to do 28,000 single third damage if you saw how hard his UMG was. So, really, ideally, no more than, like, 20,000 pops on the Alchemist. That would be nice. So, let's get Call Arms now. And time to see how much this guy shreds now. We'll also go for a Glue Hose because now we're about at that point where uh, Ceramics, Super Ceramics, start not being one-shot. So, here's how fast the Energizer does damage, by the way. With all the buffs we have at the moment... Still, pretty, pretty slow. Also, I haven't done this the entire game, but I should definitely go for a Sharpening Stone now, because this increases the damage of the uh, Air Burst when I unsubmerge it. And I believe the stone lasts for 15 rounds, so... Uh, yeah, it'll basically last the end of the game. Definitely worth it to get, because I'm still going to be uh, submerging and unsubmerging for pretty much the entire rest of the game here. Anyways, time to drop a Sabotage with my extra money. And I'm probably still going to have a lot of spare cash, even with getting multiple Sabo. so what I'm thinking is I've seen a couple people actually use an absolute zero now. Now that that's a pretty legitimate squad option, because when you uh, use the ability, it pretty much perma-slows the blimps by 50% until it's popped. So that's going to be absolutely massive to the ZMGs there, but I guess we have to make sure, I guess, to activate it at a time where there's not too many ceramics, because it'll be doing damage to everything on screen. Only one damage, but still, damage like to save nonetheless. So I don't know if I budgeted well enough here, but maybe... Uh, one more Sabo, and then we can go for the Absolute Zero. Actually, correction, I believe the Ice Slow is 25%. But nonetheless, that's still good. Anyways, here are DDTs. Uh, here's how quickly Energizer kills it. Uh, hence, not very fast. In fact, that's... Wow. That's really bad. And that was with Called Arms and Oak active, by the way. Looks like this round we finally got Balloon starting around that corner. Uh, that means we're getting pops on these cameras, but I guess there's nothing going to do to help it. But anyways, we finally passed that 1 million uh, pop count mark probably last round. Now to slowly inch our way forward to 2 million, 1,000 pops at a time. 
It's really the ZMGs here that are by far the most annoying. Doing a bit of submerged strong targeting, but it's like still taking forever, even with that. Alright, time to burst down these BFBs, because uh, it's not even just about taking away pops at this point. It's always about making sure we don't lose. Because, yeah, mobs here are getting really far. I think I have to use Call of Arms here, just to ensure that I don't lose. Come on. No way I just lost to a pink balloon. Alright, let this be the run, please. Let this be the run, please. Uh, got all the uh, mobs down to uh, ceramics. Now let's see if we need a sample here. Okay, we don't. Good. Well, that was the Nightmare of a Round. Unfortunately, we gotta do that again on 96, again 97, and 98. In this round, I hope should be no issue if I at least uh, sabo immediately. And then, I don't know if I need to use Snowstorm or not, but I'd like to avoid, if possible. Right now, we are able to pop the DTs early enough. Sabo again. And yeah, this should be an easy round. Given how much money we get on 96, I actually might be able to forward up to zero. And I think I just have to go for that. It'll help so much. How much do I get after these uh, mobs, by the way? Enough? Oh man, $150 short, dang. Would have been nice for the ZMGs. Oh well. Well, time to do what I did on 94, but just <laughs> take even more of my time. So you can see how painful this is. I was kind of hoping it wouldn't be as painful, that I wouldn't need to submerge and unsubmerge, but it's kind of necessary to uh, pop these ZMGs faster so we don't lose. Okay, looks like we got everything down to uh, BFBs and Moabs. Uh, time to Sabo. Unfortunately, all my cooldowns are off, so this is uh, not looking too hot. But maybe they'll be up again by the time everything loops back around. At least that's the hope. Come on. Okay, I think we're good here. We'll use another Call to Arms, and okay. First try, 96. And yeah, now I got the up to zero I was needing the entire time. So let's get it, and you see how, how much slow this makes it. And how long it lasts, by the way. On top of, like, calming up with Sabo. And now you can see with more blue, just how much slower it is. My god, those things aren't even moving. And you can see right here just how much faster the ZMGs pop. F ZMGs. Whereas you saw before with the normal ZMGs, they were getting to that, uh, second loop. Alright, and 97 is done. Unfortunately, I think I messed up my ice positioning. Because right now, the way I put it is that it has enough range to be able to reach, uh, the track. So that kind of freezes ceramics, allowing us to, well... Take more pops away from all the towers in here. But hopefully that should be fine. Anyways, 98 is another toughie. Definitely make sure to have to do that immediately. It's really the FBP shouldn't be a problem, because again, all the pierce we got on it. That ability there kind of got a lot of pops. Yeah, not to worry, not to worry. We'll be in the clear once we take care of all those FBFBs, so come on. Okay, they got a couple sneaking through somehow. Not good. Alright, now down to BFB is uh I think we should be in the clear, considering we're fine to the FCMG there. And do I want to snowstorm this part? You know what? I think yes. 100 pops there, but I'm gonna call it worth. Hard arms again. Oh, I don't know if that was a good idea or not, because I kind of need it for 99, don't I? Or actually, no, I think I'm fine. Again, I to zero. I can slow down all the FDTs in a range of the Energizer. So that should be no problem, I hope. So one snowstorm now, or Sabo. And then I will, uh, use this here. 70 pops over there. That's fine. Oh, and also don't forget, I should be buying my, uh, Spike Storm right now. It might get a bit of pops, but that's fine. Let's see, do I need to use anything anymore? I don't think so. We'll just let this fly. And alright, there we go. Final round, boys. Let's hope one Spike Storm is enough. I think it should be, because we do have, uh, the reset. Rivaldo's reset for 2k. Yeah, here's topping we did enough, so uh, let's use every ability. How much does Spike Storm do, damage-wise? Oh, several thousand. Pretty good, pretty good. I think I'm going to use a reset right now to get another ability off. Now up to 10k. And I reckon I should use one more ability, right? Yeah. Uh, one more. Hopefully I didn't overshoot it. Because, yeah, okay, 21,000 is a lot of pops. But I think it's collectively still below 42.5. However, this is still going to be very sketch, as you can see. Those EMGs are, like, so goddamn far. And we're still 34,000 pop short. Luckily for us, I think two EMGs is that exact amount. Unfortunately, this, still, this thing is still going to take pops away. Yeah, unfortunately, I think we're going to wreck up too many pops here. So I think I'm going to reset. Yeah, we went way over that 28k already. Really close, though. I think with just a bit of optimization, we can certainly get there. 
I think my biggest mistake here actually is putting the spike in range of the called arms, because I want to just do, do a bit of extra damage to the bad. But again, the downside of that means the spikes kind of hit the ZMGs underneath, so... Maybe I'll try an 042 on far or smart so that it hits the it, it attacks the exit so we don't get as many pops on it. Although of course the downside is that there's way less damage there to be had, but whatever. We'll use it anyways and see if it helps. Yeah, I don't know if this is gonna work, guys. The uh, spike storm gets damage way less, way slower. 10k isn't gonna be enough here, unfortunately. Yeah, really not sure what I can do about this. Like, I kind of need this Spike Strum to do that much damage to the bad. And I'll once again pop it rough at the same time, just wait for it. There we go. Well, here we go again, I guess. Bunch of mobs going through. I actually low-key think there might be a chance here. Hang on, hang on. Uh, Call Arms now. I'll Snowstorm here. And come on. 1992, 1993. Four. Five, six. Oh my god. <laughs> About two to three thousand pops short. Damn, that's brutal. Okay, here we go again, fellas. So, uh, I'm popping it at a specific point where uh, the ZMGs are really early in the track. So, hopefully, uh, we just get more damage on it in general. This is a pretty good run that I hope will work. Just gotta, again, keep spamming ability to stall. Uh, it looks like the glue wore out, so I'll reapply it. Uh, called arms now. With absolute zero. And we gotta pray. Yeah, I think we lose here, but we can at least hope for the best. Come on. Sabo again. When do I absolute zero here? Wait for it. Wait for it now. Uh, called arms. Uh, this is pretty close, though. Six. Seven. Oh, two thousand short this time. Okay, this run's pretty good so far. Let's slow down. Submerge. And then there we go. Let's wait for uh, the to be out of range for the Spike Factory, and then... Use every ability. Okay, another Tamba Amazon Glue. I think what I'll do this time is I won't use Called Arms just yet. I'll wait until it's like Moabs and then start using it, if that makes sense. Another Amazon Glue. Like, I think I should go now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, 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 go. Mine. And then I will use this ability. Wait for it now. Come on. Uh, 1997? 98? 99? Wow! You guys seeing this? 300 pop shorts. Man, that was such a good run. I don't know if we can do any better than that, but, I mean, <laughs> we're in too deep at this point to, uh, you know, fail this challenge, so, uh, guess I just gotta keep pushing through. Alright, how's this run? Let's sabo immediately, uh, submerge, uh, I think the key is basically not having uh, the spike do that much damage. So 22-8 is, I'd say, pretty good. Okay, this one's pretty good here. Let's Sabo immediately. Another Amazon Glue. Another Slowdown. I think if there's any run to be it, it might be this one here. I have one more Glue, which I'll drop here. And uh, let's go now. Come on. Uh, use this. Come on, 1991, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. Nine. Come on. Nope. Oh. So, uh, unfortunately, I think I paused too late in that last run, and, uh, now all of a sudden, I think the save is gone. Because I guess the round ended up finishing just as I paused. So, sadly, I think I'm gonna have to leave it at that. Although, genuinely, with a little bit better luck and uh, timing, I think I definitely could have squeezed out those extra 300 pops. Either way, 1.9997 million pops. Gotta round up and count that, right? Well, either way, that's gonna do it, because I definitely don't want to do another whole round of spamming tab. So I hope you enjoyed the return to the 2 million series nonetheless. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.